Hello, everybody. Whoops. So I'm going to go ahead and get my zippers ready to go. I'm using zipper by the yard. So I'm going to need a total of three zipper pulls. I'm going to need a 21 inch length of zipper. You can cut it a little bit longer, it's not going to hurt you. And then I'll need a lining zipper pocket, so I'm going to go ahead and cut a length that's like 9 inches. Just because I want to make sure the excess is like in. Hopefully the internet connection's okay. If not, I'll try to restart the video. Hi Chelsea, hi Melissa. So I'm putting my zipper pull on face up. I think I used to do it the other way and I found it's a little bit easier to do it face up. I'm starting with one end of my zipper, kind of separating it and pulling them in. It takes some finessing. And then I'm pulling it down to the last like two and a half inches and separating it. And then you may need to um, trim off one side of your zipper, but I've got my zipper pull facing up. And then to line these up, I'm going to go make sure this is as straight as possible. Pull in. And now there is uh, I'm not sure if you can see this, but there's a little bit of bulging on the zipper tape. We don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and trim it. Trim it a little bit on one side. Just like two or three teeth off. So then I'm going to grab this zipper head, put that back on face up. Still shouldn't be that much bulging. Could just be the zipper tape I'm not 100% used to because you can kind of see when it starts to bulge there we go there we go that's better I mean not much better no it's better hopefully you can see there's just not as much. I mean, it's going to a little bit with the poles being that close to each other, but you want it to be as tight of a fit as possible so that your bag is nice and secure. Okay, so I am going to start by making the lining of this bag and the handles because I like to tell myself to get those done first and I almost never do. Um, let me run and grab the pattern piece really quick. I'm sorry. I'm usually better than this. Just kidding. You know I'm not. Um, you actually need the main panel so that you can get the connector placement just right. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm here now. Is our angle okay? Does this angle look good to you guys? Hopefully so. Okay. So there's a lining slip pocket, a lining zippered pocket. It's 
good. Okay, thank you. And then my handles. Although I don't know that I have a new bobbin, so I'm just going to start with this for now. Okay, so the slip pocket in the lining, we're going to, uh, since I'm using waterproof canvas, I'm just going to fold one edge over and top stitch and then place it. You could fold it over twice or whatever if you wanted to. You don't have to. I'm just gonna do the one stitch length set to four. My machine is turned on. can in place so that I don't have to clean up a mess later. So I'm just laying this piece down on one of the linings, clipping it into place, and then I'm going to baste around the edges. machine. I need to call it out. Uh, the plastic shelves for projects, I got that on Amazon, but it's also available through like eBay, not eBay, um, Aldi's they have them. They're just um, plastic drawers for like kids rooms and stuff. They have them in clear and fun colors. All right, machine, are you done having problems? Are you done? Okay, try that again. a center division line you can uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it open I'm gonna fold my panels in half and mark out the top center and the bottom center I'm gonna set it aside and work on my zipper pocket piece I am going to leave the zipper pocket open And then once I get to the main panels, I will kind of tell you guys how I interface them. So marking out my seven inch zipper placement, holding that main panel in half, snipping the centers. Lining that up. Why they were over there, I have no idea. So I'm gonna trim this open. Mm. 
Make sure you snip nice and close to that stitching. And then I'm going to turn it. And then press from the right side. Make sure you're using lots of steam, especially with waterproof canvas. Grabbing my zipper. This is not steamed well enough. Come on, iron. zipper underneath and then when I'm using zipper tape I like to make sure it extends past that box you can see here and there it'll extend past the um, zipper pocket lining so it doesn't come undone or anything And then we'll lay our second lining piece over top of that. And I am, like I said, gonna leave the bottom of this bag open. Just sewn around the outer edge of that zipper pocket. my finger. Did I cut it open? Oh, okay, great. <laughs> I'm going to trim my excess And I'm going to leave that open just in case and I'm going to set this aside. Hi Tammy. Okay, so since my zipper is on, I'm going to press my main zipper just to remove any wrinkles. And I know that my bobbin is full enough to do the handles. I cut my handles to 3 inches by 18 inches. Uh, I can't recall what the pattern says. It might be like 14 or something. But I think 18 is a good um, arm crook and hand length. And it doesn't look too big with the bag. Um, if you're using the right kind of hardware 
for your handle connectors, you could probably also add a crossbody strap to that. Otherwise, um, it's not it's not really equipped to be a crossbody bag. As far as the gusset, it would be hard to add one. Um, well, I guess you could like rivet little connectors on to Hello. Good morning. How do you get my toddler breakfast? <laughs> um, I bet you could add little zipper tabs to the gusset on opposite sides. That would be actually kind of cool. Kind of cute. And I'll show you what I mean when I'm there. I am using a gold glitter vinyl from FM Stores in Springfield. I'm not sure if my punk embroidery has this color, but it's like a gold, it's a black base with gold and silver sparkle. It's really pretty. So you just mark the center at one and a half inches and then fold in, leaving yourself a little bit of space. Hopefully you guys can see, it's just a, a hair of space. I'm gonna move my stitch length to a five. Start on the edge that I have to fold over and line up. So across the bottom and then come back on the folded side. Get to the edge, pivot. So. to just trim the ends of my strap so that they're nice and flush with the stitching without cutting through the stitching. Oh, Melissa, yeah. Hi, Gina. Good morning, everybody. Okay, straps are done. Uh, so now let's go ahead and work on our gusset, zipper gusset. I know I'm doing things that were out of order from the pattern, but that's just because this works for me. Um, so for the zipper panel, um, kind of, kind of, yeah. I can't really say what I use as the guide because I kind of just eyeball it. <laughs> So you should have two mirrored pieces, two mirrored gusset pieces. Um, and I interfaced mine with Decaville Light. To make it a little easier on yourself, you could probably cut it down by a quarter of an inch where the zipper goes. It's a little thick. Um, but I just use Decaville Light one layer and then I'm using waterproof canvas. So the long straight edge is where your zipper gets attached. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay my zipper down. Probably gonna clip one edge, clip this edge, and then push my zipper pulls all the way to one side. Lay my zipper face down on top of the vinyl. 
keep in mind I am modifying this bag so that it's not a drop-in lining. Uh, the bag opens very wide, so if you wanted to follow the instructions as far as doing a drop-in, you I don't think it would be too difficult. It would probably be a good one to start with. I just, I got, you know, I can't, I don't want to do a drop-in. <laughs> and you can't make me. Okay, so you could baste your zipper into place if you want to. I'm just going to go ahead and add my lining piece and clips. So I cut the lining piece to the same size as the exterior, but you could cut it to the lining piece size. Uh, it would just be a little bit larger, but that would be okay. Because then you just increase your seam allowance, so it's up to you. Lining that up. Gonna straighten this out so straight down right now I am following the edge of my walking foot uh, but you'd probably want to use a zipper foot if you're using a regular machine so then I'm gonna push the lining out of the way and then I'm gonna fold it over and top stitch Make sure you don't burn your vinyl with your iron. Okay. So folding this edge over, we're gonna top stitch right next to the zipper. Hi, Tiffany. Um, I actually already made that bag. I'm using a Golden Girls fabric. Um, but yeah, that Stephen King fabric was fun. That was kind of like my tester to make sure that I liked the interfacings I was using. All right, a stitch length of five back stitching at the start. And I'm just sewing like an eighth of an inch away from my zipper. Make sure that seam is folded over nicely. I'm pulling on my lining in my exterior just taking it section by section, leaving my needle in the fabric. one part of the gusset finished. So we're just gonna lay the other zipper gusset piece on top, flip it, flip it, make sure everything lines up nicely. And I'll go ahead and baste my zipper this time just so you guys can get an idea of what that would be like. So I'm just following along the edge of the fabric, eighth of an inch. And then laying my lining panel back over top and this time I'm clipping it the opposite direction so that way when I flip it over I can just follow my basting stitch <laughs> that's so true Tiffany so there is my basting stitch and I'll just come down another eighth of an inch to make up for that quarter of an inch we need you can move your zipper pulls out of the way to start and then scoot them back afterwards.
leaving my needle in and that zipper pull. Make sure you don't unzip them off. <laughs> So now I'm going to press from the lining side and then fold my vinyl over. Again, just take it section by section to top stitch, making sure you're pulling your lining all the way out and then folding your gusset nicely. You don't want your zipper to end up wonky or anything. Make sure you're focusing on your top stitching being straight. So I messed up on my panel a little bit. You can see that the top is wider than the inside. That is okay because that means our lining is going to be a nice tight fit. Um, Tammy, I'm going to be working on that later today and then I'll get everything shipped out by Monday. So the giveaways have closed. I just haven't had a chance to announce the winners yet, but I will. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this over, no wait, hold on, that's what we're going to do. Uh, this vinyl does not have a knit backing, I have interfaced it with a uh, woven fuse. It's got like a, that kind of backing. I don't know why the Decaville didn't fuse all the way. Might be because I was using steam, it kind of loosened it, I don't know. It's okay. Oh gosh darn it. Oh. Okay, hold on. I have to go cut a piece of my lining. So there's this bottom of the, get, the zipper gusset that needs a lining piece as well as the exterior and I've interfaced mine with foam. We got this. <laughs> so I'm going to start with my exterior piece. I'm going to line up the, um, the smaller edge. Hold on. Line it up like this. Oh wait, I was going to add piping to this one. 
please hold. Please hold. Okay. That is not enough piping for like anything. Here we go. So I have this like random drawer full of piping. And I like to just make sure that the tones match up before I use them. I'm gonna steam it. Okay, so I'm going to cut my lining to, or my piping to the smallest edge of that piece. So here's the bottom, here's the top. I'm going to baste it into place. This is not part of the pattern. I just thought it would look really cool to add piping to this piece as well. Because I'm an overachiever, you guys. I'm the laziest overachiever ever. Okay, so now I can lay my bottom exterior gusset panel piece underneath here and clip it into place. I'm moving my lining out of the way. I'm gonna use that half inch seam allowance that's marked out, switch my stitch length to like a four. And then back stitch when I get to my lining and lift the foot up, jump over all my lining fabric and get back to the other side of the panel. You really want to make sure that you don't sew through your lining. Okay. And then you can see here, I've got this little jump thread. So I'm just going to snip that and then I can lay my lining flat. And then I'm going to repeat with my lining zipper panel piece. Lay that there. Um, yeah, I would say it's definitely different. Foam versus Decoville. It's definitely different. Um, Decoville is a lot stiffer without being as lofty. That makes sense. Head it out. Yes, ma'am. Okay, hop on. Mm -hmm. I probably won't. I'll let you guys have dinner. I mean, you're welcome. I know, I just feel weird. Why? I don't know. Okay. No. Freaking weirdo. Well, if you change your mind, I'll text you and let you know what plans are, okay. and then if you change your mind. Okay. Okay, okay I love you. And then you're just sewing through the lining, not the exterior panel pieces. So hopefully you can see here, this is where I didn't sew. And you might be thinking, okay, but don't you need to? And when we fold it over, we're gonna top stitch that closed. So I'm kind of squishing all the layers down and together. Here's what my side panel looks like now with that piping. And you're not going to top stitch across the whole thing. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I have an idea. Oh no, that still wouldn't work. Yeah. So the reason we're not top stitching across the entire thing is because we want our lining to be able to separate from our exterior. So if I had this thought that I could just fold this and top stitch and then fold this down, back down, but then my layers, aren't able to be separated and that's not a good thing. So I'm just gonna fold these together, line up the bottom and top stitch right across the zipper here. So it's just 
from here to here that we're gonna top stitch. So basically where your top stitch for your zipper panel starts, back stitch, and then where it ends, back stitch. And if you wanted to, you could insert um, a little piece of fabric so that you can hold it while you're zipping your bag up. It's up to you. It's really hard to say. I don't know that Decoville makes a bag more professional. I think it's all about the style of bag that you like and want to make. Um, like Vera Bradley, I guess that's a professional bag, but I don't think there's any Decoville in those. Um, so it really just depends. I really like Decoville. I like the structure it gives. It works well with vinyl, um, but it is on the pricier side, so all about personal preference if you're curious about trying it I would definitely recommend trying it all right so I'm gonna repeat that step so lining up the exterior piece on that panel moving my lining out of the way you can see here I'm gonna bunch it up just so it's over the zipper panel Sewing nice and tight on the piping, stopping at the, when I get to the zipper. Right. And then you can lift this up and make sure that you've caught your piping nice and tight. Looks good to me. And then I'll trim my jump thread, my jump stitch. Lay my lining over top here, right sides together. And I added foam to this bottom piece, but you could use like two layers of Decaville light, um, but you definitely want it to be nice and sturdy. Foam and Decaville light would probably be a winning combination as well. I just decided that the foam alone was okay. really thick though so I think I'm going to go at this side from another angle okay so I'm going to pull my exterior and my lining together Uh, I use just the Pellon brand of foam, and then again, we're just top stitching right there. To close that gap. So now I'm going to line up the bottoms and just snip the center lines. There are center lines on the pattern pieces if you traced it a certain way, but those can shift with seam allowance. So I just like to do this. And then if your lining is a little bit smaller, then your exterior, just make a little tiny, tiny snip in that as well. Great. So now I can set my zipper gusset aside.
We could work on the exterior. <clears throat> so, interfacing time. What I used to interface my main panel pieces is woven fuse on the entire thing and then I trimmed half an inch to cut out Decaville light and foam. So Decaville light is underneath the foam just because I like the sturdiness the Decaville light gives but I like the loftiness that the foam gives to this bag. So that is my interfacing technique used. So I'm going to grab my main panel pattern piece and I'm going to mark out where my connectors are using this just like chalk marking pencil. You could use a disappearing ink one as well. So I'm just lining up the sides and the bottom. I'm marking out where the bottom corner should go and the top should go. I'm not tracing like the entire thing, just the bottom. corner or the bottom angle, the bottom obtuse angle and the top. And then you're going to measure three fourths of an inch from that top line in the center. Repeating on the other side. So there's our placement nicely marked out. So we'll work on our connectors, which are the cutest little shape. I cannot even handle it. Uh, they remind me of like little fat chubby stars. So here's what the connector looks like. Just like, doot, doot, doot. I don't know. It makes me giggle. I can't help it. Uh, so I've cut mine out of vinyl and then I cut out the um, woven interfacing or stabilizer and I've cut this out of scraps of deck of the light so that when I'm folding this it's kind of no-brainer how they fold because the um, interfacing is gonna hold it in shape for me especially if you're using a thinner vinyl you'll you'll want to do that as well as these little connector pieces, you'll wanna cut like a three, four inch wide piece of stabilizer to put in the center. I feel pretty okay about this glitter vinyl holding up, so I did not add any, any, any stabilizer. Okay, so I'm adding a piece of double-sided tape down the center, I'm gonna fold those edges in and then top stitch and then we'll add our hardware. length of 4.5 and I'm just going to top stitch down the long sides of these connectors.
and then I'm just gonna snip them apart. Grab my hardware. Four, three, four square rings. Oh no! Okay. First foot down. I found it. It's okay. Instead of using double-sided tape for the connectors, I like to use basing spray. This worked last time. What I had to do though was kind of let it dry down tacky. So I'm just gonna line them up here. This is a quilt basting spray. I like to spray it over the trash can. Just giving each one a good burst. three each, I guess, three little sprays. Let that dry for a minute while I get these all on. So make sure your center raw edge is underneath. And then you're gonna lay the bottom at that three-fourths line, making sure it's nice and centered. And then you'll just add two lines of stitching, making sure they're within the, um, like the, the marked lines. Yes, that's what I wanted to say. If you want to add a rivet here, you, you do have enough room. Um, but you could also add one over top, I think. I don't know. I didn't add any rivets to this bag last time I made it. I didn't think it like really needed it, especially with two lines of stitching underneath. You could also say, screw it to the connectors given and just kind of use square connectors, but the connectors given are pretty cute. So there are those marked on. You can see here, I can still see my obtuse angle marking. Set that aside. Fold it through my connector. Get in there. thread. All right, so we've got our hardware added. Our connectors have dried down a little bit. I'm going to dry one or <laughs> grab one and try it. Uh, so these little tiny pudgy feet <laughs> go towards the bottom. So I'm going to start there by folding as close to the decoville as possible. You kind of want them to touch those pudgy little feet. And then the arms come in. You can see this basting spray is holding really well now that it's nice and tacky Oh, as it starts to shift but you're still gonna wanna use clips to kind of help hold everything in place. Okay. So you wanna make sure that it all folds in as well as possible, and there's what it looks like on the outside. Pretty cool. 
So I'm going to add a piece of double sided tape in the center over all of those little pieces so that way when I lay it down I've got something to hold it for me. Um, and then while I'm folding the rest I, I like to use hair clips to help hold it all together as well. So I'm just going to work on two at a time folding in the fat little pudgy feet and the arms. Hi Ben. Come here. Hey baby. What are you doing? Okay, and then the head comes down. Piece of tape. So then I'm going to tape these in place. Oh, excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Thank you. Peel off that tape and then line it up as best you can with the connector markings, which you couldn't see because my cat was in the way. Sorry. Sorry. Come on. Go to your spot, Ben. Okay, so lining up the bottom piece. So there's the connectors. And kind of eyeball and make sure they're straight. Looks pretty good to me. And then we're gonna sew around the edge. Uh, I don't think you need to add a rivet, like I said, but if you want to, you can. Uh, the foam of brand that I use is Pellon Fusible single-sided foam, um, and then I have never been on Twitch. I don't, I don't know much about it. Uh, the hardware is connected because we stitched on this little piece here. We added two lines of stitching, so there's the hardware added. So we're going to start by sewing across the top. I'm going to switch my stitch length to about a 4.5 or a 5. Start by sewing across the top. I like to add a little back stitch at the start and the end. And then cover up my hardware here. Add a little back stitch at that corner. Come down. Stitch. And you want to make sure that your needle stays in the fabric while you're pivoting around. And what's nice is she does include instructions for um, if you're using a woven fabric. So that's pretty cool. Clips out of the way. Ben, 
Let you go to your spot. Here, you want me to move your bedding around a little bit? Go down. Go to your spot. Okay, starting across the top. Back stitch. Back stitch at the end. Pivoting, covering my hardware, only because the walking foot of this machine could scratch things up and I don't want that. Moving my needle in as I pivot. thread zap to get the extra thread. Do I like that? Yes I do. So there's those connectors added. Looks pretty good, huh? Okay, then I'm going to set that aside. I work on the other one. Excuse me, sir. Please remove your butt from the machine. From the view of the YouTube. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So then, grabbing my other connectors and just repeating all those steps. My basting spray is still nice and tacky. If you don't have basting spray, you can definitely tape it or just kind of clip it as you go. <clears throat> my other cat was sitting up here the other day, so Ben's like, nope, this is my space. And then if you have a um, like automatic cutting machine, like a brother scan and cut or um, silhouette cameo or something like that, you could use that to cut out your connectors and accent pieces, which I did on some of my bags, but others I was having difficulty with, so I didn't. I tried though, I really did. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay my connectors over top, lining them up. Placements. Let's start with that one. It's looking a little puffy. using a scrap of leather you could use vinyl if you wanted to but the leather is a little bit thicker so I know that it's not going to scuff through the leather as quickly as it would vinyl and then to make sure that I'm in control of where the needle lands I'm kind of using my reverse and this hand crank so that I know where it's going to end up.
Okay. So there are the connectors added. Tracy, that's true. I was worried they'd be a little big, but you're probably right. What's for lunch? Uh, I gotta go. I know. That's. What are you having? I don't know. Aren't you coming back? I will eventually. Great, you could bring lunch. Be I'm fine. Like a couple hours. That's fine. Oh. I, I don't know, I might be long out. Okay, never mind then. Have fun. What do you want? It's fine. I'll go grab something. I gotta go to Dan's house because he has a big package on I it. don't want anything right now. Oh. I meant later when you come back. Don't worry about it. Bye. Oh. Okay. Great. Bye. Bye. Okay, so we've got these little round connector pieces connector overlays <laughs> I'm gonna also spray baste these so I'm just kind of laying them together in like this big oval shape and then I'll spray them and lay them on I'm also going to be adding piping underneath them so I want them to be pretty tacky all over smell. I love it. <laughs> Let me go ahead and work on sizing up my piping pieces. So I'm going to line this up just roughly along the outer edge. Cutting it. And I need two of them. This is not big enough, but I'll use it for something else. So I'm going to steam these while my basting spray is drying. And you just want to get out any of the wrinkles. I mean, that's usually the point of ironing, right? So I've left the ones, hi G. Um, I've left the ones that are going around the outside edge of my bag on my ironing board. And I'm gonna go ahead and start lining up my accent pieces. You do not have to add these, but they do look cute. So lining up the bottom edge, it is longer along the bottom. So, I mean, you could turn them, but they line up a certain way. So you wanna keep an eye on which side you're using. So then I'm taking my extra little piece of piping here and I'm just going to lift up the edge and stick it underneath. Uh, I've seen people who use vinyl and they just cut it a little larger, add the piping, sew it and then flip it over and kind of trim it down so that you don't have a raw edge of vinyl. Or um, you could also do that with like cork or something. It might be kind of cool. Okay, so just repeating that on the other side. 
and then we'll sew this all together. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And I'm just gonna sew really close to the top. You could add two lines of stitching if you wanted. Yeah, it's super fun with the piping. I love it. And then with the piping I added to the zipper gusset, it's gonna line up there as well and kind of make it look like one piece. If it works out, it'll be cool. And then we're going to mark one edge from the bottom on both sides, one inch from the bottom edge. I don't know what I just said. Grab our piping, we're going to fold it at a 90 degree angle, line it up with the marking at the bottom. And just kind of work it away, work our way around the edge. Um, I do have my X, like my foam and my Decaville trimmed down, so I'm kind of using that as a guide for my piping. So it's not directly along the outer edge. I've got like um, an eighth of an inch showing just because my piping isn't quite half an inch wide. And I will show you what I mean in a moment. I really want some like thicker piping, but I don't know where to buy it. And I don't want to make it. Okay, so then when I get towards that other one inch mark along the bottom, I'm just gonna like fold it and clip it. Okay. So you can see here, I've got like this little bitty quarter of an inch edge and the piping is sitting right up against the foam and Decoville. And then we're just gonna sew around the outer edge as close to the piping and then along the outer edge to base the piping in place. So it's close to the piping first. I am going to start off at the bottom because I didn't base down my accent piece. And I'm just sewing next to the piping, not like the actual piping, not like kissing it yet as closely as possible, just attacking in place. Just right next to the um, factory stitching are the words I was looking for. to give you a nice zoomed in look. Here's my stitching, there's the factory stitching. I've still got a little bit of room before I'm right up against the piping and that's going to be where we're going to sew the zipper panel on nice and tight so that our piping isn't like loose and wobbly like it is now. So now I'm gonna sew around the outer edge over this raw edge 
so that this doesn't accidentally lift up and get sewn into the line, like into that stitch. So just baste it all around the outer edge. extra piping pieces just so I don't get confused later make sure my connectors are folded down and then we'll grab the other side and do it all again Lay on my accents. Move all the cat hair. Thank you, Benjamin. Base that on. One inch from the bottom edge. <laughs> Grab my piping. Just holding that at a 90 degree angle. And to kind of help the piping fit, I am pulling on it a little bit. Just so there's no wrinkles, just applying a little bit of pressure. If you're worried about things shifting, you could probably use a little bit of double-sided tape to help hold it in place. I think we're okay. Then when we get to that one inch mark, I'm just gonna kind of fold it over and clip.
striping and spare threads. Awesome. So then I'm just going to snip out my centers on the top and the bottom of both panels. Then I'm gonna see which side I wanna add a nameplate to. I don't know, I'm kinda of thinking. I think I like it on this side. About 3.25 inches up. 3.25 inches up. Sure everything looks nice and straight. Okay, so I'm gonna fold my hardware down and out of the way. I'm gonna grab one of the panels. I'm gonna grab my exterior panel. I'm going to pull my lining out of the way. I don't need it, I don't want it. I'm gonna line up my centers, the clip. a few along the top. I do want to clip the opposite direction. That's my bad. Because we're going to be following the piping to sew the bag together. So I'm going to need a lot of clips and some staples. And then you want to line up your zipper panel. Um, if you added piping like I did, you want to make sure that your piping meets up at the side panel. Mine does. Huzzah. I'm excited. <laughs> Just kind of pinch those corners together. Again, make sure your lining stays out of the way. So here's where my piping is meeting up. Make sure they touch nicely. There we go. On the panel. So now I'm gonna add just a few staples along the top curve, just to help keep everything in place. You don't wanna go too far down with it, just right at the top, as long as you have staples. <laughs> Mine was empty, my bad. If you wanted to, you could staple the entire thing. You're going to trim this out anyway. It's up to you. Alright, so what we're going 
gonna do my stitch length is set to four we're just gonna sew a little ways past that piping line back stitch at the start and then as I'm sewing over that accent piece I'm gonna back stitch as well just because when I trim that down I don't want my top stitching to come loose make sure your curves are staying lined up that's another thing I really like about this bag is that the curve isn't so sudden it's it's a very gentle curve so that you can kind of prepare your sewing machine and it's it's pretty beginner friendly I should say it's a nice slope the way back stitch over my accent pieces there you go so now I'm going to trim down this piece here watch out for your lining you could also first kind of double check that you caught everything and your piping looks nice and tight. But I'm pretty confident based on looking at these stitches that I did, I did good. push this out just to double check everything looks nice and uh, it does it's real nice I love the way that looks a lot of crying so true Elizabeth um, I got, um, Tammy, that's a good question. Um, compare this to the Baronia. Uh, difficulty, I honestly, I would say this is much easier. It's a little bit shorter than the Baronia. The, the Baronia is very tall, um, but I really like the way this comes together. I think it's a lot easier. Um, I got these zipper pulls from Marie Angeli on Etsy. Okay, so I'm gonna push this back through and we're gonna add our lining. Oh, what? What happened? Your little snack tooth kills me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to push my zipper panel towards the lining and then pull my lining towards my exterior piece. So pushing your zipper panel out of the way and just pulling on one side of the lining. Okay. Face down so that your exterior and your lining are right sides together grabbing, marking at the center snip, lining that up, clipping around the top. Lining up the bottom and clipping. And then just kind of pinching the curve together. Thank you so much for your donation. Is it a donation? If, I don't know. 
I mean, you donated it to me. <laughs> Thank you. All right, lining up the bottom curve, or the bottom marking, not a curve. Clipping the curve. Clipping it together. You can also staple this if you want to, but keep in mind that my lining panel was a little bit shorter than the exterior panel. So I'm going to use a smaller seam allowance than I did on the exterior just to make up for the difference. Um, the pattern pieces do have a designated lining piece and a designated exterior piece and the lining is wider. So you could just cut those, but I'm lazy and I just, I just want to do the one piece. I'm going to sew that together, stitch length of four, yeah, four. this nearly empty bobbin and then change it out in a second. There we've got that all sewn together. If you wanted to, I mean, I'm going to trim this down and then I'll show you a trick. If you're using not waterproof canvas and you feel like your lining is a little bit saggy or droopy, you can use this little trick I'm about to show you. Goodbye. You can pull your um, matching lining and exterior together like this so my seam is pushed down and you can just kind of baste these together um, you don't want to do too much if anything you can do maybe like three lines of tacking I was using a stitch length of four um, so you could kind of tack these together within the seam allowance but I don't, when I finished this bag, I felt like the zipper panel wasn't big enough that there was any kind of um, drooping. Plus the waterproof canvas has enough body that it's not going to like seem very saggy. So I'll show you what that looks like. I knew there was a little bit there. Just some bad basting stitches. There we go. This would have been a really good place to put a You Look Really Pretty Today sticker, or um, tag, not sticker. So see how it sits nice and high in there on its own? It's not like droopy or saggy, but if it is, you could add just that little bit of tacking there. Um, so there is one half of the bag done. Now you can kind of push this back out Push your lining forward and grab your other exterior. So you can see how my lining is away from my exterior. Line up the center marks or center snips. Add some clips. And then line up your piping pieces. I 
And since it's kind of thick at the piping, I'm clipping above and below it, not through it. In my head, I just said, you can't go over it, you can't go under it, you gotta go through it. Even though it's the opposite of what I said to do as far as clipping. Anybody remember that song or poem? I don't know. This is a song, right? We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a bear. Anyways. <laughs> so I'm just kind of clipping that curve together. Uh, Gina, yes, this video will be saved. Um, the seam allowance that I used on that piece was like three-eighths-ish. Just kind of making up the difference as far as the width goes. Sorry, I have makeup on. I forgot. Not that it matters. Okay. Grabbing my stapler and just adding a few, not really. There we go. A few in the curves. You could also add one at the center. You could staple the whole darn thing if you wanted to. Get some rest, Tracy. I've got four more of these bags to make today. Woo. Next few will go. That sings that song. That's too funny. Okay, I'm going to change out my bobbin. It would have made it. I can see that, but I don't want to risk it. So I'm just going to grab a new one and know that it'll last me the rest of this bag. quarter of an inch from our, not a quarter, about an eighth of an inch from our piping basting stitch. I'm at the side accent, so I back stitched. Just slowly working our way through the slope, making sure things don't come unclipped. Couldn't hurt to some more clips. Do they make clips with like a little bit of rubber on them? Because then things definitely wouldn't shift, I feel. So clippies, they'll be grippies. And then before I turn this bag, I'm going to make sure my piping isn't floppy. In some areas it is, I didn't catch it tight enough. So I'm just gonna go back through. Uh, you could switch out, if you have this machine, you could switch to a small work area foot. That's what it's called. Um, I may need to do that for the bottom of this bag. I guess I could just do it now. Let's just try it. 
Uh, one thing I learned while using this foot is that you do not want to leave your machine resting on it. So you want to lift up this little piece here if you're using the small work area foot. Otherwise, you're going to mess up the small work area foot like I may have done. Um, I'm going to use my regular center foot on my machine. I really just need this little piece so that I can get tighter to the piping. So let's see how that goes. That's how fast it is to change out the foot. It's not hard at all. Okay, so I'm going to lower this back down and try and get a little bit tighter to my piping using this foot. Much better. This doesn't move through really thick fabrics easily, which is why I don't leave it on. So if I had like three, two layers of foam I was sewing through, it would have a very inconsistent stitch length, at least from my experience. So if you're thinking this will solve a lot of problems, it may not. Just keep that in mind. Okay, that's better. Didn't tighten it well enough. My bad. Okay. So again, I have lifted up the pressure on the foot so that it's not resting full force. It's just kind of sitting above. Hi, Kim. Doing all right. How about you? I'm low energy today and stressed. <laughs> but hopefully I'll get a little bit of lunch and I will finish four more of these <laughs> and be okay. How are you guys doing? Okay, trimming down that seam allowance. And then we're gonna add our lining and then our bottom panels and we're we're gonna berth it sew it up we've probably got about 25 minutes left of this bag all right flipping it over pulling our lining panel up i'm gonna grab my last lining piece zipper pocket open Lining up the center marks. I'm gonna line up the bottom edge and then just pinch the corner together. Oh, SoCal, I'd come and help. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Can't forget I have to cut that piece of each one lining. Grr. Still gonna use my small workspace foot. I'm gonna switch my, my stitch length is still set to four. I'm gonna use a seam allowance of about three eighths just because my lining fabric is much thinner. Like the width is thinner. I'm gonna work around that slope.
making sure nothing shifted and it did. Darn it. Thought so. This machine doesn't hold, or not this machine, this foot doesn't hold the fabrics together as well as um, the normal foot on the machine. So I'm just opening up that seam, sewing it from the other side so that I know nothing shifts. down that seam allowance. And then again, if your lining is a thinner, less dense, less stable fabric, you can push this seam down and so like just tack these pieces together. I think it'll be fine without it. This one will anyway. Okay. So now we can add our bottom panel, but before I do that, I want to make sure my unzip my zipper is unzipped fully. Otherwise, it's going to be tough later. Make sure all your zippers are undone. Fully unzipped. And my lining. You unzipped? Yes, fully unzipped. So in my bottom panel, I decided to add two layers of Decaville Heavy. I you could also do one layer Decaville light, one day one layer Decaville Heavy. I felt like the one layer of Decaville Heavy was just a little too flimsy for how big the bottom of this bag is compared to the height. So as if you add more stuff, it's gonna be pushing on the bottom and the bottom is going to bow out easier without these two layers. Um, so it is very thick, but it was worth it to me to have that stability for whoever buys this bag. So I'm fully in half hot dog to mark the centers. I'm going to mark out my first feet using my purse foot template from by Piera, which is sold now through Tops and Bobbins. I'm gonna add five purse feet. So I'm adding one in the center here. And then I'm using the two inch, there we go. Two inch from the edge. Yes, two inches from the edges. Mark that out. I'll find the other one later. Just pushing that through.
like you guys are so quiet today. But it's probably because I don't read comments as often anymore. <laughs> Alrighty. I don't think I have any tape that would hold these down. That's fine. Okay. Whew. This is going to be tricky. Rose Blanche Sophia. Dorothy, get me through this. Okay, lining up my center marks. Kind of clipping everything in place. I'm gonna use a lot of staples on this guy. Just because that bottom is so thick. It's gonna shift a little bit easier. Mesmerized. Oh, thank you. All right, I'm going to turn you guys this way just a little bit. I always find it easier to hold in my lap while clipping it together, and I know you guys don't like it when I go off screen to do things. So I'll take you with me. What's nice about using the glitter vinyl is it'll kind of stick together as you're sewing. I know another bag maker has mentioned she uses um, all that came to mind is rubbing alcohol but it's a different kind of glue and I can't think of it. <laughs> Rubber cement! <laughs> to keep her bottom in place. She just adds a rubber cement to the bottom piece and then the, the bottom of the outside piece lets it dry down a little tacky and then pushes it all together and lets that dry some more. I don't know. I think I'm, I need it done right now so that won't work for me. Yeah. So clipping in place. Flipping along those curves. I'm adding staples to more than just the bottom curves as well. Like I don't want any part of this to shift. staples. So there's the bottom of my bag nice and stapled. I don't think I can zoom in for you guys. Oh, I can. Huh, cool. Let me change the angle up just for funsies while I'm sewing the bottom of this bag on so you guys can get a better view. That's not a better view. I realize, but this is, maybe, yeah, this will be good. <clears throat> so you can see my small workspace area foot, there's nothing over here. Some. Uh, Diane, I'm honestly not sure if it does or not. What do you guys think about this angle for future videos? 
is pretty cool. Feels like a surgeon looking at the screen. Okay. I am going to be sewing right next to, but not through the stabilizer, just right next to it. My stitch length is still set to four. I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna go nice and slow, taking it clip by clip. Hmm. I almost wonder if a small workspace foot on the opposite side would be easier. I don't think I have any though. Maybe somewhere I do, but it'll be fine. It's fine. You really want to give yourself some distance from the edge anyway, so it sits nicely. So I'm pushing this down. Maybe we can get that on the edge. There we go. As I'm getting to the curve, I'm stopping and I'm kind of lifting up on the back end to kind of help work it into that curve. And I'm using my opposite hand, this one over here, to kind of pull on the bag to anticipate that curve. Yeah. You gotta get out of the way. Go lay down. Go to your spot. Thank you. Go to your spot. Keep going. You got some thread on your butt. Okay. Kind of flattening the bag, making sure. I'm catching all the layers. I'm gonna add a staple right here. I can see I don't have a lot of space. And I don't want it to move. Did I make it? Yeah, okay, great. Diane. Okay, I'm on the last curve. Make sure you always leave your needle in at, when you're lifting up your foot. Just kind of repositioning around that curve. Making sure your lining's out of the way. Whew, deep breath. Okay. Zoom it out. I'm going to trim bottom of my bag now. Kind of make sure I caught everything that looks even enough. It looks even enough. You can remove the staples with a staple remover if you want to, but my scissors are pretty crummy anyway. So I'm just going to cut through them.
Now, I have not tried it with this bag, like leaving the bottom undone and birthing through the bottom and then pulling it back through and sewing the bottom. I honestly, I don't think it'll work just because it'll be hard to get the bottom through the zipper pocket with how much, um, oh my gosh, Ben's little ear. <laughs> Too cute. Um, so I'm trying to think. It would be hard to get the lining through this pocket well enough to sew the bottom on. Um, you know what, let's, I'm gonna go ahead and try it just for this video's sake because if it doesn't work, I can always just push it back through. All right, I'll try that. So, um, zoom you guys out as much as possible. I am gonna go ahead and just birth the bag through the bottom here. Yeah, the bag opens wide enough. This should be okay. So I'm gonna pull. Because birthing this bag through the zipper pocket was not easy. It was not fun. And then now that I've got two layers of Decaville Heavy on the bottom, it would be even harder. So it's nice and wide, so we're just pushing this out. Pushing out the bottom corners and go back to your spot. Go on, go on, lay down, lay down. Oh, thank you. Even, even when my cat gets in the way. What are you doing, Ben? Go on. Get back. Okay, you're you're fine. Stay there. Stay in your spot. Stay there. Okay. You're fine. Okay. I can move you guys up really quick. shape of this bag and then with the two zipper pulls it's a little bit easier to close <laughs> okay. so she just needs to be massaged back into shape but I really really like the interfacing combination and I'm really glad I added um, two layers of heavy on the bottom just so that there's a little more weight and stability to this bag. So now we're gonna try and pull the bottom through this lining here. But what's nice is that it opens really wide. Oh, that's true, that's true. Okay. Zipper pocket pulled open. I'm pulling my lining through it. work I don't know honestly I 
Aha! It will work. Okay, so moving the actual zipper pocket out of the way. I know this looks really confusing but that's why we have our centers snipped out kind of open it like a flower so this is the bottom of our lining right now it's where we're going to add the bottom of the bag whoops okay just throw it everywhere who cares who needs it so I'm going to snip the center marks of the bottom of this bag and find the center of the side panels and clip that as well. I'm going to switch back to my regular walking foot because I'm going to need the strength of the foot to hold this fabric in place. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, I'll try that on my next one and I'll update you guys in the description. I definitely think sewing part of it and leaving part of it open would be fine, like you suggested. Um, last time I just birthed it through the pocket and it was hard, but not terrible. But this bag with the right um, interfacing could definitely be made on a domestic machine. centers <laughs> yeah this is not going to be easy I may um, I may go ahead and like pull the bag out so part of it and then birth it through again oh I didn't fold this in yeah let's go ahead and try that no need to update you guys, I just don't think this will work. Okay, so now I've got all that marked. So this is gonna hurt my soul to do, but I'll go ahead and pull the bag out again. So I'm pulling my lining up and away from the zipper panel so that I can see the bottom of this bag nice and easy. I'm keeping in mind where my zipper pocket is because that's where I'm going to leave it unsewn. And we're gonna birth it through that area. So I'm still clipping it, but I'm not going to sew through that. So clipping it all together here lining up my other four center marks this is already feeling much easier we're getting there guys okay we're getting there 
time. Okay, again, my zipper pocket is up here, so I'm gonna start by sewing at the top of this curve and working my way around until I get to the other curve and then I'm stop again. I'm using a little bit wider of a seam allowance than half an inch, but not by much, just a little bit. Only so the lining bottom fits nicely. Okay, so we're back at the curve on the other side. So I'm back stitching. And then I'm gonna trim my excess and then we'll birth it, sew it up, and add the handles. I really like the size of this bag. I think it's a nice, like, medium sized bag. Um, I know some people think it's a little small and absolutely personal preference is a thing. Um, but as far as my customer base, I like to make several sizes so they have some options. Okay, so let's try and birth this through the hole in the lining. So of course we're going to start with the bottom. This doesn't feel as easy as earlier when the whole bottom was left open, but this definitely feels like it'll be easier than the zipper pocket birthing method. Um, you might be thinking to yourself, well, why not just do the drop in then? And I just don't like a drop in. I don't know why. It's so sad to imagine a bag balled up like this. Okay. Surprisingly, it's through. There we go. Okay. Pushing that bottom out again. Uh, the other bag I made this with this pattern, I birthed it through the zipper pocket. And I actually, I, I mean it was difficult, but I didn't have two layers of Decaville on the heavy, like on the bottom. 
So that that's definitely making it harder. Benjamin. All right, you gotta get down then if you're gonna just stand right there. Okay. Bag is still okay. Still doing fine. <laughs> so now we can grab the bottom of our lining through. Nice and easy. Yes, this was a good method because I can see from end to end of that curve and sew it up very easily. So end to end, start by lining up the center And then I just pull from this curve to the center. And then once I get to the center, I kind of revisit. How I have things lined up. So just clip to clip. Pull it nice and straight. Hi, Cecilia. Hello to Finland. Finland, not Finland. Alrighty. And it is sewn up. So now we can push that lining back in, kind of reshape the bottom of the bag, push everything in place. And then I'm gonna sew up the lining pocket. And I'll go ahead and add two tags to this one. And then more may know, and you look really pretty today. Push that back in and then we can add our handles and be done with this bag. I'm so excited. Um, if your fabric is really wrinkly from being pushed back and forth and back and forth, you can use some steam to help iron that out. reshaping those curves yeah the piping on it is super fun and I am again just really happy with the interfacings used I think if you um, followed the directions you wouldn't be unhappy with it I think she knows what she's doing as far as all that, but it's so cute. So the handles, like I said, I cut to um, 18 inches and I think these are a nice grab handle arm crook length. So I'm just kind of pulling them through, folding it over, and then I'll um, rivet them on. Uh, I used glitter vinyl and linen cotton canvas for this bag. The material of the piping is just cotton. It's maxi piping from rights, braids and tapes and stuff. Just what they sell at Joann's or Walmart even. As you can see here, the handle length is just so cute. Just a nice 
I love it. Um, so as far as pricing for this bag, I charge $115 for this one and the rest that I'll be making today. Um, I'm trying to think. You could also add um, like a little slip pocket to your bag so people could put their phone somewhere. Uh, I've seen people who make it a little bit bigger and I think that looks really cute too. But hopefully you can see like it's a pretty good size. I would compare it to like a lunch bag maybe. Size wise, not style wise. Um, it's just, it's such a cute pattern. As soon as I saw it, I was like, I want that pattern in my life. I want it. I need it. So I'm going to go ahead and set my handles with rivets and then make my tassel and we are done. So black nickel, a four. Oh, thank you. Yeah, if you guys could give a thumbs up. It helps other people see the video as well. Um, you know, and it just makes me feel good. <laughs> Let's me know you enjoyed it. If you didn't enjoy it, no need to give a thumbs down. Just don't watch it. No, I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't care. Uh, and then I'm also going to be making a tassel for this bag just so it's uh, at first I added it as kind of a nice little accent piece but when I started adding two zipper pulls to my bags I realized you could use the tassel to clip the zipper pulls together um, and then it's kind of like a pit pocket pick pocketing deterrent so I'll show you guys what I mean when I get there without cursing yeah I feel like um, ever since I got my Juki uh, I still curse at some bags but I know that my machine can and my machine and I can get through it you know we'll get through it we can do it if this was my first time making it there probably would have been some cursing those rivets through and then setting it. So one of my rivet presses is the hole punch and the other is the setter. So I'll move you over if you can watch me set this one. So I push the cap and the post together, kind of wiggle it and push. And then just kind of push the bag back into shape. Uh, I still have gold star presses. Uh, I tried the cam snap one and I personally didn't love 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 it enough to keep using it but I think honestly it's just this is what I know this is what I'm used to but it still felt like a rivet press uh, so I'm making my tassel here I just cut this two and a half by four and then added little snips in if you're not a confident cutter, you could buy a, a template as well or just trace the lines first. And then I roll it up nice and tight. Adding it into my tassel cap. And then I kind of turn it and push 
so that I know it's all the way to the top and then it'll kind of expand and unroll. And then I will add the screw. Uh, Tammy, no, this is inventory prep. I have two four day shows back to back weekends. Uh, one in Chicago, not this weekend, of course, but next weekend. And then the next is Atlanta, Georgia. So trying to get as much inventory done as possible. Uh, so you can add your tassel to one of the pulls, but then when you're not using the bag or you're not going to open it, you can use this tassel to close both of them. And then when you're pulling on it, you can't open it. And no one can just sneaky sneak in there. So this is the how you doing bowler bag all finished. And I'm doing pretty good. I love the way this looks. Um, I love these connectors. I, I like how they come together. If this was all one piece, it would be, I wouldn't say a bit of a mess, but it would be a little bit harder to do. Um, so I really like that. I love the size of it, honestly. I think it's really easy to get into, um, especially when you add two pulls, you know, you can open it up nicely, slip, pocket is acceptable accessible the zipper pocket is accessible oh thank you guys now I need some breakfast or lunch or something oh no Vita so yeah I think if you made this bag bigger it would be really really cute too sorry these are my shorts Enjoy that. Mm. Gross. So yeah, just to go give you guys an idea of it against a body. It's super cute. Uh, this probably isn't a bag I personally would carry, only because I like my bags a little bit bigger and I cannot lie but I still think it's a really great size. So thank you guys for watching. Oh, I wanna show you guys something new before I head out. There's Ben, looking like a weirdo. Um, so cute. I just got these stickers in and they're so cute. So they say, stay sharp. And I don't know if you guys have seen um, next to my sewing machine. But it's the same artwork that I have there. Uh, so there's just a few in stock. They, If they sell out, I will restock them because they're just so darn cute. But thank you guys for watching. If you're not subscribed already, make sure to do so. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to be notified every time I go live, there's a little bell you can click. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys have a good day. I hope to go live to make another one of these in my So Whatever Facebook group. Make magnets. Oh yeah, I should. Um, if I do, it won't be as detailed instructions. I'll just be kind of speed sewing in a way. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have a good day. Bye.